When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Alif, Lam, Mim غلبت الروم في أدنى الأرض وهم من بعد غلبهم سيغلبون في بضع سنين لله الأمر من قبل ومن بعد ويومئذ يفرح المؤمنون يفرح المؤمنون بنصر الله ينصر من يشاء وهو العزيز الرحيم وعد الله لا يخلف الله وعده ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون يعلمون ظاهرا من الحياة الدنيا وهم عن الآخرة هم غافلون صدق الله العظيم This surah again it started with alif lam mim which is we call it al-huruf al-muqatta'ah and we got the chance uh, many times to explain and to talk about this huruf al-muqatta'ah Today we'll be adding something new about this huruf al-muqatta'ah again uh, if you realize one thing about the Qur'an, it's called Al-Qur'an Mabniyun Ala Al-Wasl. What do we mean by that? So when you read an ayah, and let's take a surah that all of us we know. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ Till the end. But once I read it, I make wasl, I make the connection. So I say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Or I will say, if I'm stopping, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ But if I'm connecting, I'm doing wasl, I will say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ You know, you understand what I'm trying to say right now? So the Qur'an is always مَبْنِيٌ عَلَى الْوَصْلِ You connect an ayah with another ayah. And sometimes even between two surahs, you could make the connection. So if I'm reciting Al-Fatiha, and I'm going to recite after that Surah Al-Nas, right? So I will say, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ That's called wasl. And the whole Qur'an, mabni, it's built on wasl. That you could connect the ayahs, one to the other ayah, or one to the other surah. And this is something very well known, a basic things about the Qur'an. But it comes to the huruf al muqatta'ah it's not the case. So when you find the beginning of any surah which is, has this huruf al muqatta'ah like this one, alif, lam, mim. I, I cannot connect it. I cannot say alam. I cannot read those letters by connecting them, by doing wasl between all those letters and say alam. Or I will say Alif Mun Mim. I cannot say that. It's incorrect. It's not acceptable. And don't think that this is just a coincidence. Nothing in the Quran is a coincidence. So this Huruf al muqatta is the only thing which is built in the Quran that you do have to make a fossil in between the letters. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even when he was talking about that, about the reward of reciting the Quran. And he said, لا أقول ألف حرف. I would not say ألف is just a letter, right? But ألف is like one word, subhanAllah. And for that letter, which is ألف, it's ten good deeds for each one of them. And again, so remember, this حروف المقطعة, it's completely different than the Qur'an, the way how we do the wasl in the Qur'an, we do fasl in those huruf al-muqatta'ah. 
And another example, if you take Surah Maryam, right? Kaf, Ha, Ya. This is how you read it. Ain, Saad. I, I cannot read it Kahiyas and connect all of them. I cannot. And it will make no sense, no meaning, subhanAllah. And you may find some ayahs, or for example, the beginning of Surah Al-Fil. It starts with the same letters. Alam. So I connected the elephant, lamb, and meme, and I read it as one word, as a question. Istifham, subhanAllah. But in Surah al rum or in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, or Al-Imran, I cannot read them alam. I have to read them alif, lam, meem. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ardahum that way, and the Sahaba, they told the Tabi'een that way, and it was narrated from generation to another generation until it came to us. And that also proves something, which is that the Quran, the same way, the same way Jibreel revealed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah he taught it to his companions and the companions to their children and so on and he continued. That also tells you it's 100% sure that this is the same script, the same version that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be revealed to mankind. That's what we have in our hands. So the huruful muqatta'a again, again the scholars talk about it. Some of them, they say have meaning. Some, they say they have no meaning. Some, they said we don't know the meaning. Some, they said they probably do know the meaning. So there's a lot of talk about it. But remember, it is something special in the Quran, which is you see that there are differences between those huruf al muqatta'a and the entire Quran itself, subhanAllah. Let me also remind you, probably I said that before, this huruf al muqatta'a don't think that when it was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those kuffar of Quraysh, why they did not talk about it? They wanted to prove the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrong. They wanted to tell him, you are coming up with something that makes no sense. They even accused him that he is a poet, or he was a majnoon, or he was a kahin. But none of them pointed to this huruf al muqatta'a to say, this is something which is make no sense. Although that's the very first thing that's supposed to come to their mind. But they realize that there is something special about this huruf al muqatta'a Or probably the Arab, they knew something which is used to follow this pattern uh, of this huruf al muqatta'a Anyway, alif lam mean one of the huruf al muqatta'a And the next ayah, ghulibat al rum The Roman were defeated. And that will take us to another story. Story again of the end scene. And if you remember, probably a couple of weeks, we said the Quran broke the curtains of the end scene, of the past and the present and the future. We said about the past that Rasulullah was not there at the creation of Adam, was not there at the birth of Isa alayhi salam, was not there at the birth of Yahya alayhi salam, was not there at the birth of Musa alayhi salam, was not there when Ibrahim migrated, was not there at the time of Yaqub, was not there at the time of Dhul Qarnayn. But Rasulullah was talking to us about all those issues in details, although he is the person who never went to school. So this is kind of unseen to the Arab, to even to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he couldn't afford to know those things. Subhanallah. So he broke that curtain of the end scene of the past. And that's one of the miracles. Some people may say, and we talk about that also before, somebody taught him, and we realize that that's impossible. That someone taught him all this unlimited information that you find in the Quran about the past. And then there is the curtain of the present, subhanallah. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or the Qur'an sometimes used to inform people about what's going on in their minds and in their hearts. And you know what? What's really interesting that the people used to realize that yes, Rasulullah was informing people about what was there hiding in their minds and their hearts. The hypocrites, the kuffar, and even some of the Muslims, subhanAllah. But the ayah now talks about something else, about the the end scene of the future. 
how you would know about what's going to happen in the future. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, غُلِبَتِ الرُّومُ فِي أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ The Roman were defeated in some word called أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ So the Mufassirin, they talk about أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ أَدْنَ means the closest thing or the lowest thing. And the Mufassirin, the old Mufassirin, they say that was the closest place to Mecca or the closest place to Medina or the closest place to Kisra, to the Persian, the closest place to the Romans. So they have different kind of interpretation about this ayah. Some of them they say Adna al-Ard means the lowest land in the entire earth. But this is a new explanation, a new interpretation that some scholars did. And they say the area where the, the battle took place between the Roman and the Persian at that time was, or it is, the lowest part of the earth. Anyway, but more important than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ after the Roman were defeated, the Roman will win. And this is a prediction. And it happened that this incident happened. The, the Roman were defeated when the Muslims were still in Mecca. And the Muslims, they somehow were very much closer to the people of the book, to the Christians, if you want, right? Then to the idol worshippers, because the People of the book, they believe in God, the creator. And they believe in prophets and messengers. Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So there is something in common between them and the, the Muslims, which is they believe in God and the hereafter and in the religion. But the idol worshippers, they worship stones, something else. And the Persian used to worship fire. So the Persian, they were much closer to the people of Mecca. Both of them are idol worshippers. They worship fire, they worship the idols and the stones. The Muslims, they were much closer to the Christians and the Jews. All of them, they believe in God. So when the battle took place between the Roman and the Persian, and the Roman were defeated, the people of Mecca, they were very happy with that. And they used to say that to the Muslims, just like our, if you want, our allies, which is they worship also idols, the they were able to defeat the people who worship God, which is the, the Christians, which is the Romans at that time. It will happen that we will defeat you too. It was a little uh, talk or a dispute, if you want, between Abu Bakr Siddiq, عن, and this is in the time of Mecca, and another person, in, uh, another person among the idol worshippers. So Abu Bakr was very excited when that person was somehow irritating him that the Roman were defeated and we will defeat you also. The Roman, the worshiper of God, like you guys, they were defeated by the Persians, the worshiper of fire, and that's what will happen between us and you. Abu Bakr got excited, he said, indeed, the Roman will defeat the Persian in few years. And probably he gave him a number, probably three or five years. And then they put a bet on that. They say, you know what, if that happened, I will give you 10 camels, but if it didn't happen, you will give me 10 camels. And uh, Abu Bakr came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was telling him about what happened. And Rasulullah, he come down, Abu Bakr, he say, Abu Bakr, why don't you go back to that person? And then what you do, you tell him to extend the period, but you also add more camels on that. Because at that moment, the Quran was revealed, telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Roman were defeated. After they were defeated, they will be able to defeat the Persian, but in Bidar Sinin. Bidar Sinin. In Arabic language, the word Bidar, if you look anywhere, it between 3 and 10. Between 3 and 10. And this is also something about the Arabic language. When you're talking about plural or you're talking about something, there's a specific word for specific number. So if I say bid'a, it does not go more than 10. Cannot go more than 10. Otherwise, it's not bid'a. And cannot be less than 3. Otherwise, it's not bid'a. So the Quran said specifically that another war will take place or another battle will take place between the Roman and the Persian, but this time the Roman will win. So Abu Bakr went to the person and he talked to him and they added more camels. So this is, was in the time of Mecca. Now, imagine if 
the battle took place, but the Roman were defeated again. What this Quran, or what's the value of this Quran will be? Or imagine, if Bid'a Sinin passed, a new battle took place between the Roman and the Persian. What will happen to this Quran? And why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will take this risk if it was from his own? But definitely he was not talking from his own. Now more than that, which is very interesting to understand, uh, when the battle took place between the Roman and the Persian the very first time and the Roman were defeated, if you study, if you really study how the situation used to be among the Romans, among the Persians, you're going to find that the Romans, they were very weak, very divided. The king was just into drinking and women. And, and it looks like that, that Roman Empire was about just to collapse. But the opposite for the Persian, they were much united, much stronger, much smarter, much organized. And that's how they were able to defeat the Romans. SubhanAllah, that's what happened. But in, when after the battle took place, and after this ayah was revealed, the historian talks about, they said, we don't know what happened. That the Persians started fighting among themselves. Then even they killed the Kisra and his sons start jumping. Each one of them wants to rule. And the opposite what happened for the Roman. That emperor of the Roman, he changed, they say, from a person that he had nothing but except going after wine and whatever you call it. He say it, it changed completely his habits and his behavior that he start like sleeping on his horse, meaning that he's always ready to prepare himself. They said, we just cannot explain how that happened. You may say, oh, probably he wants to take revenge, probably whatever. But the, the dramatic change that was taking place in this area and that area cannot be explained at that time, subhanAllah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the, in the Quran, he said, the Roman will win. And exactly the Roman won the next battle between them and the Persian. And look what this ayah says. وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ And after they were defeated, they will win. فِي بِضْعِ سِنِينَ In few years, and we explain what's few years, between uh, 3 to 10. Now, the most interesting thing here, that the battle between the Roman and the Persian, it took place in the same time. And you could check the books of the historians. Forget about the Muslims historians. Go and check the books which is written by the Romans or the, Greek, or the people at that time, or whoever, the Europeans or whatever. You're going to be very surprised that the battle between the Roman and the Persian, which is the Roman defeated the Persian, it took place the same year that the Battle of Badr took place. The Muslims were able to defeat the Qurayshis, and the Romans were able also to defeat the Persians. It's probably coincidence also. It is very difficult to say it's all coincidence. And look what the Quran says. فِي بِضْعِ سِنِينَ لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ To Allah, Everything will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from before and after. What do we mean by from before and after? Before the battle took place and after the battle took place. If you look at the situation of the Roman, the Roman were not doing well. And now they start doing well. And the Muslims themselves, they were not doing well. And after, they will start doing well. And not only that, the most... <laughs> the most... Im impressive thing that happened in the human history and I mean what I'm saying and you could check again the information there is no civilization ever there's no civilization ever that was able to take over one whole area in less than 20 years in less than 20 years and look what I'm gonna say the incident I'm talking about it happened around the sixth or seventh year of the prophethood. Right? Now, less than 20 years later on, there will be no Roman Empire in the Middle East and no Persian Empire in the Middle East. How those people, the Meccans or the Arabs or the Qurayshis 
or the Muslims that they were a small minority, that they had a number of around, I don't know what to tell you, around 200 Muslims. In less than 20 years, they were able to defeat, to destroy the two biggest empire that existed at that time. What's 20 years in the human history? And who actually did that? Those Arabs that used to live in Badawa, in Jahiliya, worshipping idols, they used to fight with each other for a camel, for a cow, for whatever is that? How that dramatic... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah said, لِلَّهِ الْقَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بعد. Everything will belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at the next sentence. وَيَوْمَئِذٍ يَفْرَحُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ and on that day, the mu'mins, they will have the farah, the happiness, the joy. And the joy over here, it's many things. Number one, as I mentioned, the battle between the Roman and the Persian took place on the same year that the battle of Badr took place. And that was a joy and happiness for the Muslims. That's number one. Number two. That the Roman were able to defeat the Persian. And they also brought a joy to the Muslims themselves. But more important than that. Don't you think that when this prophecy happened. That when the Roman defeated the Persian. That all the Muslims they had such a satisfaction inside of their heart. That what I followed is the truth. And it happened to be the truth. I was not mistaken. I did not follow something which is wrong. And that gives you more joy, actually. You know, sometimes you, you, you're thinking about something, and you have some confusion, and you have some doubt, and, and whatever. And then it happened exactly the way that you were expecting, or the way that you were hoping. It happened exactly. And that's what happened. That's the day of the joy for the Muslims. And that's what happened on that year. And not only the Muslims defeated the Qurayshis in the battle of Badr, right? And we know how great was that, a change in the whole area, but also a change also in the other area that the Romans were able to defeat the Persians, subhanAllah. وَيَوْمَئِذٍ يَفْرَحُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ بِنَصْرِ اللَّهِ With the victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave them. يَنْصُرُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah gives victory to whoever He wanted. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ to Allah, all the Izzah and all the Rahmah. Look, let me go back again when I say, And on that day, the mu'mins, they will be very happy with the Nasr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at the battle of Badr, anybody was expecting the Muslims to defeat the Qurayshis. Even whoever that person, look, Let's go back again the circumstances of the Battle of Badr and how it happened, subhanAllah. Muslims were not actually planning to fight in the Battle of Badr. Rasulullah himself, when he went out, he went out to attack the caravan of Abu Sufyan. So there was no intention at all to fight against the Qurayshis. And not only that, even the Quran described that. The Quran described when the Muslims, they realize that the caravan of Abu Sufyan already gone. And now that they have to face the Qurayshis, they were not comfortable. The Quran says, And you want the one without the, the thorn, which is, will not hurt you. Meaning, attacking the caravan of Abu Sufyan of 40 or 50 people, and you get it and you go back. But Allah said, but Allah, he wants something else. And he planned something else. And the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something else. So nobody was expecting that. Nobody was expecting that this hundred people or three hundred people, thirteen, that they want after a caravan, they will be facing an army of over a thousand, very well equipped, coming with anger, coming with revenge. But what will happen to them? They will be destroyed. It's only a nas from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Quran said, وَمَن نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ and the Nasr, it's only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody could give you victory. And we knew that for a fact, that even the Sahaba themselves, they realized that. The Sahaba themselves realized that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran. وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنٍ إِذْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminded the Muslims on the day of Hunayn. On the day of Hunayn, the Muslims, they had a good number. A big number. Not bigger than the Kuffar at that time, but big number. 
But Allah said to them, or the day that you are very pleased with your number. And some of the Muslims, they said, There is no way that today will be defeated because of our small number, because we are not small number. We are big number. Everybody was expecting we're going to win. They had experience. And Rasulullah is with them. But what will happen? What happened to them? فَدَاقَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ And that day, you felt like the earth, the earth is squeezing you. The earth is so vast and so huge. And the Muslims were being tested that some of the Sahaba, they ran away. And some of them, they said, مَا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Whatever Allah promised and His Rasul is only غُرُور, it's not true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, He brought His victory. He brought his victory. The Nasr is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, Muslims will never win because of a number. Muslims will never win only because we are united. Muslim will never win just because they are Muslims. The Nasr comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are factors which is will help with that. In the Battle of Uhud, and all of us, we know what happened in the Battle of Uhud. The beginning of the Battle of Uhud, and probably I spoke about that a couple of weeks ago, how the Battle of Uhud started. <coughs> the Battle of Uhud started with Banu Abdu'l-Dar. Banu Abdu'l-Dar, which is a family from Quraysh, they were actually taking the flag. And the leader at that time from Banu Abdu'l-Dar, his name is Talha ibn Abi Talha, from the family of Banu Abdu'l-Dar, which is they used to be very famous. And he was completely covered Covering himself, he took the flag, the sword, he came out and he started calling the Muslims, Helmin Mubariz, anyone wants to fight. And the Muslims, they were avoiding that person because he was very well now that he was very skilled. And they were avoiding that. And he was somehow nasty. That even say, you all believe that if you die, you're going to go to Jannah. Why don't you come to me? I will send you to Jannah. And they were trying to avoid that. They were trying to avoid that. But subhanAllah, a young man among the Muslims, as Zubayr ibn al-Awwam, came. He is from the family of Banu Abd al-Muttalib. His uncle is Hamza ibn Abd al-Muttalib. He jumped on that person, brought him from his ear as its description, killed him. Not only that, there will be six people that will come one after the other one. Talha ibn Abi Talha, then his brother, then his brother, then his brother, then his brother, then his brother. Six people, one after the other one, will come, take the flag, and all of them, they were killed by the Muslims. That's how the battle started. It looks like the Muslims are going to win. Not only that, when those six brothers were killed, their, their sons took over, which is, their sons took over. So another one of them, another four sons were killed. Ten people from the family of Banu Abdul Dar were killed in no time by the Muslims. How does it sound? The Battle of Uhud is going to be differently, right? Won by the Muslims. It didn't. Some of the Muslims didn't listen, didn't obey, they disobey Rasulullah. They left their places. When they saw what's happening, they say, okay, we don't have to wait. It's, it's done, it's finished. Subhanallah, going back again to the ayah. وَمَنْ نَصْرُوا إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Definitely, the victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعْدَ اللَّهِ لَا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهِ Remember, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always happen. You believe in it or you don't believe in it. You have doubt or you don't have doubt. It may come right away, it may come after a year or two or ten or twenty. But it will definitely come. It will definitely come. You know when Muhammad al-Fatih... He opened al qustantiniyah That was like something inex something that nobody could even think about that could happen, subhanAllah. But it happened. And that was also the prophecy of Rasulullah that the Muslims will do the Ghazu for Qustantiniya and they will be able to, to, to take over, subhanAllah. And up to now, up to now, it's a Muslim land, it's a Muslim country, subhanAllah. But in the same time, the Muslims were kicked out from Spain on the same time or the same area, subhanAllah. See, this is as the Quran says, And these are the days, a day for you and a day will be against you. But who are you going to be or where are you going to be? On the side of the people who will believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his wa'ad 
or the opposite. I will stop over here. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people that they will have the firm belief in the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people that they will be guided. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove all the hardship, especially for our brothers in India. You know that today there's a big protest. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do the, the change in the heart and in the mind and in the situation of the Muslims there. There's a lot of kids, a lot of men, old men, women, and some innocent people. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his rahmah and with his izzah and with his qudra that will, he will do some changes, although we don't deserve it, but probably they deserve it. And he is the one who could do it, inshallah. La ilaha illallah, astaghfiru la ilaha wahdu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku lahu alhamd. There was no Roman for them that they know the prediction about that because all what happened, it happened in Mecca among the Arab. Now, even if this prediction went to the Roman, they would not even take it in consideration. Who are that Muhammad? It's a person in Mecca, right? And he is under, according to them, he is under their rulers. So the, nobody will listen to him. Oh, he would say, you know what? He is more emotional for the Romans, right? And he does not like the, you know, the, the idol worshippers, and that's why. But one thing very interesting that you brought, actually, uh, the Rasulullah said, "Ida mata kusra, fala kisra ba'da. Once kisra will be killed or die, there will be no another kisra." And Subhanallah, that what happened. The the Persian Empire, which has lasted for thousands of years, one of the biggest power in the human history, it ended at that time where Rasulullah said Kisra will die and no Kisra will come after. That's exactly what happened. And actually, when Kisra he heard about that, and he heard about the prediction and so, he actually sent two of his um, advisors or people who were. He say, you go and. Who actually rules that place? So Mecca used to be probably under the ruling, if you want, and directly of the Sassanese, which is they were under also the Persians. He say, okay, you send one of our governor and bring that guy to me, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I will whatever. So when he went there, subhanallah, when he went and he came closer and he came to Mecca, uh, Mecca or to Medina at that time, subhanallah, uh, Rasulullah he met him, and he said to him. I will just tell you one thing. The king who sent you, he was already killed last night. So these two guys, to accept it, not to accept it, anyway, but they don't have any other things but only to accept it. So they returned back and they found exactly that Rasulullah told them he, will be, he died or he was killed on that day, and he died and he killed on that day. And these two people accept the Islam. There, there's a lot of details about this incident. Probably, inshallah, we'll have more chance to talk about it next time. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> وبختم كتابك أرقى وبختم كتابك أرقى يا أهل الحفاظ أطل لتحيوا خير الأبناء من حفظ القرآن وصار للأمة نورا وهدى